Hello Internet, Rumbutt here, and welcome to Bloodborne. Let's begin, shall we? Alright. So. Hello everyone. So, uh, we're back in Forbidden Woods, and, uh, in the last video I missed a couple of things because, uh, well, I got distracted by that fucking Death Keeper, or uh, Snatcher, as some people call him on the wiki. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna go and I'm gonna head back to uh, the area where that guy was, and uh, hopefully kill him, and then I will show you a couple of things. So I'll meet you there. Okay. Alright. Uh. Alright, so we're gonna go back around back here. There's a pro. Oh, yeah, shit. Here's some other stuff I missed. So, yeah, I'm missing stuff all over. So, I forgot about this ladder up here. And can you guess what's gonna be on this roof? If you guess crows, right. So up here on this roof is the white church set, which has extremely good poison resistance. Uh, and there's a reason why they give it to you here. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why they give it to you here. And we will see soon enough what those reasons are. Okay, go here. Oh! <laughs> so I think this might actually be a way around. Yeah, I think it is a way around that gate that gets dropped. Which means the Death Keeper is right there. I really don't like him. So. best strategy to kill those guys, get uh, get a uh, gunshot knockback on them, get an interrupt uh, with the gunshot, do a visceral attack, and then when they're down, when they're down, you want to uh, retarget them, jump behind them, and then go for a back step. And if you, uh, if you can pull that off, that should probably kill them uh, if you're not horribly under level. Uh, so yeah. That's a really good tactic to use, and from now on, that's the tactic I'm going to use against them. Alright, so now, uh, let's see. There is a path to an area around here. I need to remember where it is. So I'm going to look around for it and find it. And it is a path uh, that will lead us back to some place we've been before. I just wanted to kill that motherfucker and get that item finally, because the last time I killed him, I didn't get the item. Okay. So, this cave is a special path. I really don't like that going down here with 9600 9, blood echoes, but you know, whatever. So, we're gonna come in here. I think there's some sort of enemy in here. I don't remember what. And we just got the white church set, white church set, and we're getting antidote. So can you guess what's gonna be in this cave? I mean, you can guess some of what's gonna be in this cave, but I doubt you'll guess all of what's gonna be in this cave because uh, it's fucking fantastic. 
So before I go down any further, I'm actually going to put that white church set on. Alright. So, yeah. Looking pretty cool. So, oh yeah, and I should put... Obviously, these enemies aren't going to be vulnerable to poison, so I'm going to put antidote on my hot bar. Okay. This area is a wonderful, wonderful place. So, we have church giants. Now, they're barehanded, and they don't have any robes. They're naked church giants. Uh, that doesn't make them any less scary. There's a sleeping one over there, and it looks like he might have... A weapon so let me binocular. No, it looks like he's just sleeping. Okay. So there are a few items in this area and the water will poison. So you're gonna want to avoid these guys. Uh, there's also worms in the water. Which is just great. See, there they are. Those guys are great. Fantastic. There are no items over here, but oh shit. Ah shit! I'm still in poison water over here. There we go. This is a little bit of shore. Okay. <laughs> so there's this tiny little bit of shore over here. We're gonna try to get the items while pissing off as few of these guys as possible. Uh, but we're going to be probably letting the poison just run its course and using blood vials to keep ourselves from dying. So, yeah, as you can see, even with this, which is probably the best poison resist gear in the game, you're going to end up getting poisoned fairly. This water is not nice. So, just, uh, you know, move between the areas. Oh, he does have a weapon. No, those are those are ones. Move between the areas, keep an eye out for the worms, and, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, poison buildup still is moving down. Uh, I think it's down enough to get that item. So I'm gonna turn over here, grab this item. Nourishing blood gems, those are awesome. Uh, and then, we're going to just, yeah, we're just gonna look it. Grab this. Frenzy Cold Blood, excellent, that's cool. Watch out for the worms. Uh, and grab this. Frenzy Cold Blood. Getting a lot of blood echoes there. Run, 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 run. I think, yeah, there's an echo over there. I'm aggro the second one. Grab this. Dirty Blood Gemstone, that's a uh, pretty good poison. Fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck. Oh, fuck. Pretty sure that I got all the items last time, so now I can just run straight to the path, and uh, the path will take us to a familiar area. I can run straight to the path, avoid all the naked church giants. Uh, you can tell they're church giants just like the enemies from the Cathedral Ward because they have those bells around their necks. Uh, so there's that guy. Yeah, it looks like an enemy fell to their death. Oh shit, that guy's got my blood echoes. Do I want to get those blood echoes back? Not particularly. On the other hand, do I want to lose those blood echoes? Not particularly. So, I'm gonna go out of here. Fuck, get me off my shit. God damn it, worms. No. Damage is 
shit against him. That took a lot of resources, but uh, it's kind of worth it, actually. Because this path will bring you to some very interesting stuff. So, if you notice, the atmosphere of the area kind of changed just now. And if we continue going upwards, through this ladder, we're ascending quite a bit. find ourselves someplace very close to where we've been. There's a cold blood dew there. It's a very low level cold blood dew. I wonder why that is. If we go in here, oops, we pull this lever. You'll recognize this. That is how you get to that gate right there that's locked at the very beginning of the game. That's how you do it. Alright. Uh, I have a lot of blood echoes, so I'm going to go cash them in early. Okay. So now we're back at Yosefka's clinic. And we're going to go back outside. Right. Taking a right is going to bring us into this new area that we have now unlocked. And you'll notice there's an open gate over here that we didn't even need to open. And uh, there's going to be an asshole enemy around here. Um, and I'm going to try to be careful because I don't want to lose my insights. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a, uh, a mind flare. And uh, so I'm going to try 
to be stealthy. Let's see if I can't sneak up on the asshole if I can spot it. If he doesn't spot me first. Okay, so we can see there's an item over there, and we're probably going to rush over to it and get ambushed by this dickhead. Does he see me? He's probably going to see me. Yeah, he's. he's Yeah, I really hate those enemies because, I mean, I don't want to lose insight, man. I, I want to be able to show all the weird shit that happens. Some of which I have not seen as of yet because, uh, you know, I didn't know about it when I first went through the game. Okay, um, uh, we're getting, oh, there we go, there's a ladder. So now we take a ladder up, and we're going on a rooftop, so, uh, I'm at, I, I imagine you know what we're going to find up here. Crows. As always, we're gonna find crows. God, I love the game so much. there is a rumor, and it may be inaccurate, but I suppose we're going to find out here. There is a rumor that wearing the white church set will allow you additional interactions in this area. Uh, which I suppose makes a little bit of sense because uh, you do get it right before this area. So we're coming down to the left. We're going to wait before we go that way, and we're going to come this way. And there's another of these weird blue alien creatures. So, uh, we're gonna kill them. Uh, when we kill it, we'll pick up Sedan. Now, and then there's one that's on the, uh, that's on the table right there. So, and you'll notice we haven't seen the one person that we actually have. Uh, we haven't seen. So, I will tell you that the old woman 
and we get the communion rune, and this is actually an upgraded communion rune. Uh, I will tell you that the old woman that we sent here, that's her, what we just killed. And you can tell because she drops a sedative. Uh, when she, uh, if you send her to the chapel, there is an NPC that you can also send to the chapel who will end up killing pretty much everyone. And, uh, the old woman will drop sedative. So, um, yeah. So now, we're gonna go down this hallway. And we'll open this door. you worm your way in here. Very unfortunate. I had such high hopes for you. Well, I won't make any excuses. Would you mind leaving us alone? Things need not change. You'll do the rescuing, and I'll do the saving. But if you refuse to leave... Oh well. I always want to try my hand on the heart now. So, yeah, that's Yusefka. Or is it Yusefka? The question is, is that actually Yusefka or is it not Yusefka? Because if you'll remember, just a few moments ago, we killed one of these weird blue things. Right? We killed this one, and it had one of Yusefka's blood piles on it. So, that rumor that the uh, white church set will cause her not to be hostile, uh, false. That rumor's been debunked. So, we can lay that rumor to rest. That is not a trigger that will allow you to do that and prevent her from becoming hostile. It's important uh, for the ending that I'm trying to get in the game to not have her become hostile. Now that we've covered that uh, that backtracking secret path and gone through Yusefka's clinic, uh, oh, and I can mention that uh, you will encounter one of those little blue alien. Well, you'll encounter at least one of those little blue aliens in Yusefka's clinic, and if. Uh, for every person that you send, you will encounter an additional one, and they will drop whatever that person would have dropped if they were killed. So, for example, you can send, um, the little girl, the only way for her to survive, but she won't actually survive. I mean, I suppose you could have her survive as a weird blue alien monster if you sent her to the clinic, and then you, uh, and then you proceeded to not kill her. Uh, but that's pretty much the only way that you could have her survive. And then, um, the, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, yes, the, uh, the one, uh, dude who calls you a liar. So, figured out that apparently he will go to the opposite location that you tell him to go. So, if you tell him to go to the chapel, he will go to the clinic and get horribly experimented on, as we can see right there. Because Yusefka is clearly a mad scientist. Or maybe she isn't. Because you'll notice her attitude actually changes very significantly uh, between uh, between when we, uh, when we first encounter her and when we talk to her after beating Vicar, uh, after uh, accessing the Cathedral Ward and getting the Odin Chapel as a safe place. Uh, our interactions with her change drastically. We're no longer able to obtain blood vials from her, and uh, we also uh, she also asks us to start sending people, and is super creepy about it. So, and then of course we have the little blue creature in there that when we kill it, it drops Yusefka's blood vial, which seems to imply to me that something else is, has taken the form of Yusefka or something or someone else has taken the form of Yusefka and turned Yusefka into that little blue creature.
future and then was asking us to send people so that whatever, whoever she or they is or are uh, could experiment on them and turn them into more little blue creatures. Uh, but I'm not entirely certain about that. So, uh, uh, and honestly, how can you ever be entirely certain about anything in Souls? Hello, Internet. Future Rumbutt here. And I did it dumb. I forgot to pick up that item on my playthrough. Now, this is in the windmill where we encountered the, uh, the guy who turned into a beast. And down here is the cannon, which is a very important item. Anyway... That does it for this flashback from the Lost playthrough. Back to your regularly scheduled program. Now we're going to continue on through the forbidden ones. So, I think the Forbidden Woods is one of the places that really highlights how good the game design of the one is. Because uh, there's only one land in the whole area, and there's two. summon snake balls. So there we see our first snake ball. So we're going to go and take it out really quick. Uh, and the snake balls fortunately are pretty slow. So a single snake ball by itself is not much of a threat. However, they blend into the grass. Which I think is kind of, I think it's pretty cool because that's basically how a real person in real life would end up getting uh, getting bitten by a snake, right? The fact that the snake blends into the grass and they just step on it. So you can see right there, it kind of blends in. And and then you can see there's another one over there. snakes give you, uh, will poison you, so, also the floor of the ground so you can whip your attacks, fantastic, getting some, uh, bloodstone shards from bloodstone shards, uh, I have my antidote on the ready just in case here. So there's a clip, and then you can see another part of the area over there, which we're probably eventually going to get to. Um, heck, here's another one. And you can hear some lovely, lovely sounds. That sounds
uh, the speed of the cane mode is probably better for the snake balls, but for the snake dudes, the reach of the dick is definitely beneficial. So I can hear something, but I'm not sure where it is, which is not That's awesome. You're clearly telling me that if my weapon is not upgraded, it should be quickly burn these guys down. They can get point of attacks off you with a short reach. They can attack very quickly, and so they can poison you very quickly. And we see some more snake clusters. You know what, I'm just going to go ahead and use the whip mode because the reach is just so much better. I just need to stop getting up in the face of the snake balls and uh, I should be able to handle the reach better. Okay. So, hmm. Alright, there's snake balls. Probably gonna stop me from making the back step, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Nope. Alright, now I have to deal with this guy and snake balls, so I'm gonna deal with the snake balls first.
like I said, uh, this could end up being a little bit tedious for me going and exploring and finding everything in the whole area because, like I said, it is very easy to get turned around. Uh, they're not called, called the Forbidden Woods for nothing, and the first half, the first half of the area is very straightforward. The second half of the area, however, okay, we see the giant snake all over there, and the problem with the giant snake balls is that they're surrounded by the little ones. So, and then there's another giant snake ball up here. So I'm gonna go and get this giant snake ball up here. As you can see, they spent turns in and they have some very decent reach. Unlocked by one of those giant snake balls is pretty much instant death. That's the clear deep sea room, which, if we look, I believe is going to be a slow poison resist room. Yep. So your uh, lake and sea rooms are going to be your. You can see an item that we're going to hopefully eventually find down there, but pretty sure we can't survive that jump. Now, one of the really irritating things about uh, the small snakes and the giant snakes is that the small snakes are very difficult to, they're very slow, and so it's a pain to uh, kite them off the pebbles. So, whereas I would recommend pebbling almost everything in the game, here the little snake balls are going to be a pain.
this screams ambush to me. That was it. Not much of damage. Oh yeah, sometimes the snake ball is going to be hanging in the trees, so watch out for that. Uh, more twin bloodstone shards. More twin shards. That's always nice. Okay, so down there is actually... Uh, if you wanted to, you could probably drop down... Uh, right here. <laughs> oh! Oh! I think I re Oh! Okay. So, this would be a major shortcut. If you were to drop down over here, you could skip most of the rest of the level, and you'd be right near the second shortcut to the boss. So you could actually, right here, skip a lot. Um, we're not gonna do that. We are going to progress through the, the uh, area the normal way, and then uh, that's where the giant snakes were, the cluster of giant snakes, they were down there, and uh, I hear some more over here, and there's an item over there, so just going to do that. Uh, oh, there's a giant snake. Okay. Be lost in the Forbidden Woods forever? Will he piss off the snake dude and cause him to go all snaky? All these and other questions will be answered in the next episode of Let's Play Bloodborne. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Later, Internet. <laughs>